Hi guys, Sam with Scrappy Industries. Welcome back to the 240 Thumb Series. In the first video, you saw me welding on the mount for the thumb. We had to do a little machine work on the main pin to get our lock bolt and everything to go. And physically, the thumb is installed. The next step is to install all the auxiliary hydraulic lines. The first thing I'm gonna do is drain all the hydraulic oil because there's a couple of return lines we have to put on. And in order to do that, we need the hydraulic oil out of the tank. Otherwise, we'd have oil going everywhere. So stay tuned and let's jump right into this project. This is the filter. I'm gonna find out. Seems to be. That oil doesn't look bad. Next! And there's the oil. Get the Milwaukee pump and see what we can figure out. I feel like this could definitely go poorly or just take about 38 batteries in 27 years. But even if it takes a while, it still might be the easier solution. Foot valve weight of some sort, I think. Ooh, stay in there, girl. Push her out of there. Pretty well. So I think this tank is somewhere in the 40-ish gallon mark. I think the whole system is like 70 gallon. Obviously you're not gonna get out what's in the cylinders and everything like that. And we wait. Well, that actually went really well. So a definite uh, go-to plan in the future for things like that, I would recommend. Far easier than trying to catch it in a big pan underneath and then wrestle that out and dump it in something. You're already done. It's already where you wanted it. So I'm trying to get sort of a game plan here of what's got to happen. And it looks like the two main hydraulic hoses, probably about impossible to see, but they run in the back of this whole stack. This piece of tin here between the engine and the valve stack, like a firewall, it has to come out. It's got the computer on there. And I think that's basically the fan control valve there, or at least proportions how much oil goes to the cooler over there and then the other. And I haven't really traced out the lines, but anyway, I am thinking maybe you can just sort of let all that stuff hang there and then pull that firewall out. But you also have all your return on this side also mounted to it. Basically there's all sorts of fun stuff. I don't think there's any reason that can't just sort of chill there though. Start yanking stuff apart. I don't have too much more time tonight. I do like they were nice enough to give you slots on these so you don't even have to take those bolts all the way out. That's free. Trying to keep a lot of these bolts back in the holes where they came from because otherwise I will be totally lost putting this back together. I'm sure of it. It's scary, that one's loose, so I'm gonna bail out on this job. This is the bracket that holds this return line. I don't wanna take this bolt off because then I won't be able to slide that firewall up out of there. We're just getting started and this job is gonna suck. I do appreciate that when they tighten these bolts, a lot of them, they haven't seemed to made them 400 foot pounds, which is awesome. I really hope there's not some at the bottom. Well, that's a good sign. I think it might only need the top two here. You knew it wasn't gonna be that easy. It's like tucked in behind this tin here. Oh, be connected to it. I bet you that piece has to come off though. I can see ya. 
think something, I think this deck is gonna have to come off for sure because it's gotta clear that. Basically, there's just those sets of bolts and pull that off around the exhaust. So now that muffler cover piece is out of the way, this is the part of what's kind of burning us here. Let's see how the main firewall is behind that giant muffler guard piece. Maybe I can hold that back or pry it around it. I'd rather not take that all off. We don't have to. I don't know that we weren't missing some bolts on that. It sure doesn't want to move. What's holding you? A little more light. So part of this auxiliary addition are the pressure relief valves for the auxiliary itself. The main valve stack has the spool in there for the auxiliaries, but that's it. The pilot lines aren't connected and the obviously there's lines not connected to it because there are no lines on the boom. There's plugs in the place where these pressure reliefs go underneath here under the valve and then one on the top of the valve stack. Basically, there's a plug we're gonna pull out, thread this guy in, and then you use an Allen wrench to actually set the pressure relief when you set the thumb all up. But this basically gives you the ability to have a pressure relief on the auxiliary hydraulics. We're gonna put that in now. <laughs> Trying not to get the camera absolutely covered in oil for this shot. I already busted this loose earlier. So it's just finger tight. Get it down out of the way. A bit of oil package. And we'll thread the relief up there. Let's place really quickly. And that's the relief valve. This is where the pilot line needs to hook up, but I screwed up and tried to outsmart Mother Deer by buying dash six ORB to six JIC fittings, but evidently those aren't dash six ORB. They seem to be, I guess, a metric size. The thread pitch is just off of the 916th thread of the dash six ORBs, but they are a fair bit larger diameters. I'm sure that you could find this fitting elsewhere, but I think I'm just going to buy it from Deer, and you know, I think we're going to be fine there. The other hoses I got from Deer do seem to just be a dash six JIC, so that part is more standard and common, so we just need that goofy metric to JIC adapter. Until I get that correct fitting out. Go ahead and throw that guy back in. So this is our auxiliary pilot kit from John Deere. It's basically all of these parts. Give you the mounting bracket for the solenoid valve, the hoses, a bunch of different fittings. This is like a pressure regulator, pressure relief valve to set the flow rate of the auxiliaries by setting the pilot pressure. And there's just a whole bunch of parts and pieces. We gotta figure it out. So we're trying to sort out the disaster of this little drawing is basically all we have to go from to figuring out how everything goes. We trace this pilot hose back to the pilot pump, seems to be bringing the pilot charge up here to the valve bank. This one seems to go to the cab for the joystick purpose. So we're gonna throw this run T in right here and this will be this hose which goes to the solenoid valve, which is very long. We're still trying to figure out where the solenoid valve is actually supposed to mount. Seems like over here in this general area, we should have enough room because the other connections are on the back side of this block. If nothing else, we'll drill some holes and stick it over there. Where'd he go? Sam. So in the meantime, Sam came up with a plan. He also got actual instructions. It seems that we don't have 100% right parts. We have like the parts to add auxiliaries to a 470. And this plate is supposed to be straight and kind of different and bolt right on behind the cab. So we're gonna make it straight and drill hole some holes. Well, Sam, how do you make things straight when they're not? enough for government work and it's flat but what are you about to do Clearance is Clarence, Clarence. 
I don't understand. This parts kit shows like it's the same parts kit, except for like every other machine is the one we needed and we didn't get that kit. The 470, there's like a bracket on the cab and that 90 degree thing, it would have bolted like here somehow, it appears. But rather than fighting with John Deere and getting the right parts, we're, we just flattened that out, torched this out of the way because there's two nut certs here. One of them to clear. We're gonna bolt this on. We were able to use one of the metric nut cert thingies already on the machine. And we drilled another hole for a 3 8 bolt because that's what we had. So we'll get this thing properly hacked together. All right, where's the 3 8 bolt? You got it, John boy? We have no lock washers. Oh well, there's no lock washer on the other one either, I suppose. Oh, I need a bit more washer, but our hole is bigger than that. Here, how about this one? This will work. The one they provided. Yeah, much better. Looks like they knew. They knew the scrap they provided. Beauty, Clark. So this is the drain line back to the tank. These two are the pilot of the main valve, which land here and opposite on the bottom. They go through this valve stack. What that really does, I don't know. We could save some fittings by literally just not going there and just hooking these up to there. I do know that there's a weird fitting with like a small orifice that goes in the back side of that, so that kind of probably smooths out the engagement, disengagement of the old thumb. So, we're 98% there. We might as well just roll with it, put them in the right way. Well, you know what though? I'm gonna, I'm gonna wheel that all the way back. We could put the weird fittings right here and on the bottom with a little orifice, and then hook these hoses direct. I have a 90, we could put on the bottom of the 90 and then the other hose I got, and then I think that would actually allow us to finish the pilot with the parts we have. Let's get to send it. Are you silly? Still gonna send it. Let's get this tightened up. <laughs> 10 millipeter, coming at you. Properly torqued. Yep. That's what six millimeter or whatever they are. But they need a good shot of it. Why are some of these nuts? These nuts are bigger. I still keep ending up with no metric crescent wrench. And tighten the hoot nanny. Hey, hi, big boy. Hi. Hi. So we did end up getting, thanks to our good friends at Groff Tractor in Sellersville, where I accidentally ordered this kit from, they ended up digging and digging and digging and finding the nice appropriate installation manual, which is good because it found us where this wiring harness connects is way down here on the cab. And there's a three pin plug there. And that's where this dude plugs in. And then these other two plugs are these two solenoids, which is basically like in and out on the auxiliaries. So they also showed that this is supposed to mount here, as I said before about the whole 470 deal versus everything else. Then the pressure comes from down underneath the cab, basically on the back side of the safety valve, your left-handed like throw it in and out safety valve. So the auxiliaries won't work when you pull that back. And we're going to go ahead and hook up more stuff. All right, harness is hooked up. I guess we'll just sort of nicely as we can coil this up and maybe zip tie it to that other harness. I don't know why this is 45 feet long, but it is. And then I don't know if anything forces you to plug this in one versus the other. So if it does the opposite of what you want, you don't even have to flip, flip hydraulic lines. You can just flip which solenoids plugged into which. And then we have some other magic sauce happening over here. I think that may have to do with if you're running the proportional controller or not. That's hooked up. We got the, like I said, the pressure line, or this is the drain line. This dude's the pressure line right here. And then the two that go to the spool. So I'm taking out the plugs in the back side of this manifold-ish thing where we need to route through after all because those orifice fittings, which are like an M16 thread, only go here. This is some oddball thing, it turns out. So once again, we have to have it for Mother Deer or Mother Hitachi. If there's a roadblock to have in this project, we're gonna have it. Man, I just need one more click. Why are you that tight? Up in, up in our garage, yeah. You want one? I sure do. See, these guys have this wee little hole, and I think it has to do with kind of starting and stopping slowly. Let me throw it in the back here, and this is where the hoses from the solenoid valve down here will connect. I don't know, whichever one works. There's a switch on the left side you gotta turn on too. And I hear your relay, but I don't feel anything out here. 
The only thing to program is for the sensor that we don't have for the feedback for the auto idle, I think was its main purpose. I don't understand if you hear that relay, maybe there's a fuse out. I'll have to look into that. Because the relay is clicking, it's doing, it's not holding it back. So one of the buttons is stuck on the joystick and we're not really sure how you take it apart, but it seems like it just kind of unravels. So after ripping the rubber off the old girl, the buttons are seemingly both alive in the naked joystick. And we have a solenoid valve. There's just one connector back there behind the cab. Basically tells you it's the right hand joystick. Ended up pulling that access cover off behind the cab so we can see that. The, the horn still works. Sweet! Basically these guys are hooked up to the back of the pilot manifold. Missing fittings and parts to get from here to here. Need to order those. And then I was checking on this hose I bought here. Which this is a male JIC on the hose. Connects right up to our hard line with the flared end and the nut in the sleeve. I think it might need to be a hair longer too. I'm thinking wait on those hoses until this is fully welded down and secured. That's gonna be the game plan there, but we're making progress. This thing's about as powerful as electric rat. Sam, what are you doing over here? Oh, changing these hoses I forgot about. Like a little accumulator thing, I guess. And changes more oil. So the hose is just plugged into the end. And that's all it is. Pulsation dampener, I guess. A little place for the volume to go. Why don't you tell everyone what you're doing? I'm watching you smash your head on the pump door. <laughs> Actually, I didn't watch it. I heard it. Thanks, sir. Poor John boy is trying to get the stars out of his eyes. This one opens up, apparently, just to fuzz water. I need a, another size up. Can you hold that hose on? Bust it. It swivel didn't want to. Too much swiveling. Man, that thing is hard as a rock. When I say put a rock under the tire, I mean a rock. Watch, you are flinging a whole bunch of oil down there. Yeah, that's why we're here. How's that match up with those empty new jobbies? It's pretty close. Oh yeah, those are over in face seals. Interesting. Is that what these are? Are these JIC? Ooh. <laughs> That's O-ring face seal. We might want the fresh new O-ring. So out of curiosity, more than anything, I want to try to flare some three-quarter stainless tubing. So what I got here... So what I have here is this three-quarter JIC nut and a layer sleeve, I guess you'd call it. Basically, nut goes on and this sleeve goes on. As from what I understand, I could be totally wrong. And you flare this and this backs up that flare. There's just kind of like a little seat in that. This is a rigid 37 degree flaring tool and it looks, you know, basically just like a brake flaring tool. I need to do a little bit of figuring here as in how high do you set it and that kind of thing. I think what you use, let's look at the instructions. See what we got. Do, 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 do. Standard flare even with top. Increase flare diameter slightly above. I like that. Decrease flare diameter slightly below. So we're gonna go with standard flare even with the top. This already has a nice chamfer on the inside from when they factory cut this tubing. And there's like a little notch so that when you tighten that up, finds where it wants to be. Crank that on there. And then my understanding, oh yeah, you can you can see it in there. As you're spinning this thing, that kind of wobbles around. It's not just jamming it in there. So we'll just wind this in. And that's it. Kind of automatically ratchets out. And you're giving it all you can give. See if it worked at all or if it's split or what have you. Moment of truth. Da, 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 da. Sweet. Looks like we have ourselves a flare. You can see how that flare turned out. Really smooth. Really didn't take much effort. I'm surprised. I thought it would take a little more cranking. And that slides up and that slides over. And we're now making metal hydraulic lines. I like it. My plan now is to come up over here, kind of at a slight angle, the way these lines are. Put a 20 degree bend, so it'll be a little bit shallower than that guy. Run up the boom, and then put a 30 degree kickback. Should put a straight, run up and over, and then the left side will just come straight down. We'll put a double clamp here. I guess we'll have to put that little 10 degree kick out somewhere in here, come out with it. We'll put a double clamp there, weld it down to the boom, and then the hoses will hook up right here, just like these the rest of these guys do a 20 foot stick of tubing just makes it to the end of the boom where we need to and i'm going to just put a few weld on tube clamps along the way let's see if we can destroy our bending setup 
All right, so 10 inches from the bottom, I'm gonna put that 20 degree kick that way. I should not have bent the camber in this first, but as, as shallow as it is, I think I can basically take it out and put it back in. It's gonna be in the wrong spot anyway by the time we add this kick. It's like buying coiled tubing and uncoiling it, is what I'm telling myself anyhow. We're gonna call that good enough. I haven't used this bender in basically forever, so it might be interesting. Check that handy dandy protractor looking to be about pretty close to 20. So it's a good thing to have your sleeve and nut on there. I would probably say you should flare it last, but now it's in the right spot anyway. Since the sleeve is stuck, yeah, we're about 26 ish. Take this to 30. And there comes the bend. And there's our bends. Welcome back to the 240 again. The next stop is to weld on all these mounts on the hydraulic lines. I am working on cleaning them up. I have the stick welder here ready to roll. It's kind of nose during the shop. I don't want to worry about boards for the tracks on the concrete. Let's get to it. I'm going to clean a little paint off. Work on getting our new tube attached to the boom. All right, so that's all the clamps on the tube coming up to here. I'm still a little bit not sure how I want to tackle the connection of the hose from the end of the tube down to here. I have the hose, so I'm going to go grab that and hook it up and basically mock up how the hose is going to wrap down. I got a reducing coupling that's going to go into the DIN adapting fitting that hooks up to the thumb cylinder. I need to go grab those hoses as well. They're still over at the barn where we were working on this thing. I'm thinking maybe just a little kick out right here be all we need and just let the hose terminate back here i do have male to male jic connectors if i do need to make like a little extension this is just a 20 foot stick of tube that's where i landed so if it'll work let's roll with it that goes there i'm thinking we might as well try to basically complete everything out to the thumb and then you can mess with it from there and see what we got And let's just say that I hope that the DIN connectors I ordered are right. Should be a DIN light. These are just NPT threads. I haven't taped and doped and tightened that all up yet. Just kind of want to see what we got here. All right, so that's all connected. Kind of want that to follow that guy. And then I think looking at this, I'm going to need to weld like a block on the back of this coupling and that'll space it out. Or I could get the right size green clamp, maybe weld that down and clamp it with that. The back was up there where it would be actually attached, something like that. That's not bad. I'll probably throw another clamp down there on that hose. That completes the other side of the boom. Got all the line on there, all the mounts welded down, including the mount down there where the two hoses connect, all the way out to the thumb. Cool. So I'm trying to figure out how to tackle the next problem on the 240. This is a one inch series 61 block that bolts onto the side of the main valve block. Well, the hoses I bought are all three quarter and I don't need a lot of flow. I'm just trying to run a thumb here. So what I have done is I've got some burnouts that are wide enough. My original idea was just turn this sideways and basically make a series 61 one inch to three quarter adapter kit because I couldn't find anything like that online. But then looking at it further, <laughs> This is right up against more blocks under there, so there's no room. So I think what I can do is change my drawing a hair and just move this over like that and offset it because there's nothing in the way over here. So this is gonna have meat on this side. These are already burned out, my new pieces, but I'm gonna drill and tap that, mill in the groove for this O-ring like the one inch has, and that'll seal against the valve block. The hose side carries this O-ring and this just needs to be flat on the back side here. That's the current plan, it's just uh, one thing after another. Ordered these pieces of one inch thick, regular 836, nothing special. See how the block off plate lays on there. Thinking I put the three quarter clamps sideways like that. So I'm gonna kind of offset this whole deal. I'm gonna get the VF4 set up for drilling and tapping these adapter blocks. We're gonna have to swap out a good bit of tooling to get started.
guys, I've gone ahead and set up all our tools. My library was a little bit off to make sure that each one was the number I thought it was. So that's why I was kind of climbing up, verifying the carousel. The pocket number is not necessarily the tool number because every time that the arm comes down, it's swapping the pocket, the tool that's in the pocket versus the tool that's in the spindle. So basically the computer keeps track of, hey, tool five is in pocket 10. And then if, you know, tool six is in the spindle, when it grabs it and swaps it, now tool six is in pocket 10, that kind of thing. So you got to check on that. If you're all in sync and all your guys have the same library in the computer, no big deal. Brad and I haven't been working out of the same library, something I need to fix. And he's been doing most of the milling programming, most of all the programming. So I wanted to verify the tools. I put the stock in the vise and I set our XYZ zeros, which is the bottom of the stock against the hard jaw, the back of the vise and the left side of the stock. Normally you'd put a stop so that when the materials in the vise, you slide up against and bump into it. We're only making two of these, so what I'm gonna do is just probe that X each time I put the part in, it's faster than setting up the stop. So let's uh, try to run through this program and hopefully we don't crash it. So this is the setup. This is a two and a half inch deep, two and three quarter wide chunk of one inch thick deal. I just had these burned out from our local metal supplier. They cut it out on their high definition plasma, made for a very nice edge. This is the wireless tool probe. I have the program all loaded on the machine, ready to rock and roll. So let's get to it. All right, let's see what we got. I'm gonna start by surfacing that top. I got the shell mill there. I have the optional stop on between each tool. It's going to stop. Let us take a peek at what's going on. I don't think our shell mill is quite as big as the software thought. Really nice surface finish on what we do have though. I lied and told the computer it was a little bit smaller tool and it fixed that issue. Onto the spot drill. I like to slow things down while we're coming down in case there's a problem with the tool offset. Now that we're good, we can speed her up a little bit. Now the whole purpose of these spot drills is just to keep the drill bits from walking. They're very accurately placed and now the longer drill bits will follow. It just plows right through. I didn't do any pecking. It's a carbide insert drill that can take it. That's our through hole for the hydraulic oil. This is the tap drill for the 3 8 bolt holes for the three quarter. Could have meant that pretty well. Oh, yeah. It did. Amateur move. Now this is the through hole for the metric bolts for the M10s that go into the one inch in the machine. This is a 2764 drill bit. We're running 900 RPM and five thousandths per revolution. sink on the socket head cap screws that hold this block on. This just ramps down there at the diameter we want. Five degree ramp. get eyes on it make sure we're not going to chamfer right through the hard jaws of the vise. Fire everything back up and keep going.
All right, the only thing left is tap these four holes. I'm a little concerned that that tap is gonna hit that back parallel, which I can't get out of there. I drilled through by 0.24. I think we're gonna be fine. Are you silly? I'm still gonna send it. Yes, tapping definitely always makes me nervous. seem to survive though. There she is. We're gonna put four of these. They're a little bit shorter. That goes in the valve block. You can see they're flush. That way when these clamps are on there, then we're gonna put in those tap holes. That holds the three quarter fitting down on top of it. And we'll go in there like so. Cool. Let's throw another one in there. On to the second part. We did strip a couple threads out, almost like they were galling. So I'm going to put a little cutting oil in for this try. It's also a brand new tap. I think that cutting oil made life a little happier. And that's our part. Well, most of it. Don't need to service the backside and throw an o-ring groove in it. So I bought four of these blanks. Let's go ahead and run them all off. You can really see the advantage of a CNC. Once you're set up, you made it through that first part. It's a matter of putting the part in, hit and go, and getting good parts out. I am not a machinist by any means. I know how to use this stuff. I would definitely prefer to use CNC versus manual because I don't have to remember anything then. I just have to go from my CAD model to the machine, get everything set up right one time, and we're up and rolling. No sooner did I say I'm not a machinist is uh, I kind of forgot to probe this one. So it drilled off. Luckily, I was standing here and caught it before it broke the drill bit off. There's no point in finishing the last slug because uh, we're not going to have four. We're going to have three, maybe. But this is a good test dummy for the last operation so we don't destroy a good part. So this is what we got going on the back side. We've got to surface it. And then we have this o-ring groove we got a mill in there with an eighth inch end mill both sides of that and then i put a wee little chamfer on there just to clean up the burr Let's see if we can not mess it up so i'm going to probe on this back side is the bore because it's just a flame cut outside edge that's not very accurate but we drilled this hole and it should be pretty accurate at least accurate to what we machine more so than the the outside profile so I'm gonna probe that bore. The Z we don't need to change because it's still the bottom in the program. The way I did the offset, we're lowering it 10 thousandths, so it's gonna shave off the top even without changing our Z offset. That's all it takes, it knows where center is now. I'm gonna load the program off of this floppy. This machine is so old, it did have a three and a half inch floppy drive, but it has an emulator in there to use a USB stick now. The holes back, I was trying to note for myself, means you can't flip this in either way. The holes for this adapter, which should be here, except this is the messed up part, they have to be back. So I gotta try to not mess this up and also remember to probe each one because I didn't set up the vice stop. quite clean up that one edge there. That's fine. I think I'm also gonna slow the feed rate down a little bit on that guy. We got a better surface finish on the other side. But I'm gonna let this part run through, try to put that O-ring groove in there with this 1 8 end mill now. And if it's good, I'll just make those couple changes when we run the final parts. Taking it pretty slow and easy, this little baby eighth inch cutter. It's ramping down as it goes around the circle. The um, biggest thing I wanted to check was the depth of this O-ring groove. And 1095, basically within a half a thou of what I'm measuring on the walk-off plate, we're gonna call it good. Let's not forget this crucial step between each part. I add a little note to the program with a program stop, trying to catch my dumbness. So 
So that just leaves us with one crucial part, the fancy adapters that we machined the other day. Stopped by the hardware store and grabbed the 30 millimeter long bolts and some new O-rings that we needed. The clamp kit has the 3 8 hardware that we tapped these holes with. These are a little bit offset, as you can see, and that was done intentionally so that this width is the same as the block off plates. There's something on one side that we can't run into, but the other side was clear. So what I'm gonna do is put it that way, and then I think the top has to get flipped. So that's that piece. You gotta put these in first, tighten this up with an M8 Allen, and then you can see it's below flush. That's so when the clamps are coming across here, they don't hit that. I wanted to show a little dry run and test this before it's in the machine to make sure it all works. But I got these hoses made with this nice long kick at the end because in the machine there's like the valve stack and then there's all these other hoses and some brackets. So you need that length to get around everything. I think it'll all work. Let's get that final connection hooked up and maybe we'll have a thumb today. This thing is not overly powerful, but it's convenient sometimes. Round it off with the proper torque. Sorry guys, it's just too tight in here for all of us. The adapter is all bolted in there. You'll probably see a lot better in this video than I can in real life. Hose is in, put it down from the top and started it on the hard line. Guess I'll start the top flange. I can slide up into it. Oh, I think we got lucky there, sweet. Okay, pop this little cover off. And then it goes like that. And then the other flange. This is all tightened up and installed. Runs out to the boom nicely. Surely you guys didn't think these were gonna just fit without a little modification, right? That never happens. Quick little bath from all the grindings. So there is a flange beside here that we're just hitting. And then there's a bracket on the opposite corner. We need a little clearance for that as well. So nothing pretty. Hit it with the angle grinder, cut it out of the way. Got the adapter in there. Worked perfect after our grind and drop. Now I got the top hose connecting to our left side stainless new tube. Get it hooked up and get her on there. Another set of flanges. This is the exact same length as the other bottom hose was. Try that arrangement out. I think that's gonna work for us. I'm gonna put one of these on again. Took up this side. You can see this male JIC is just directly the flare that we made. And then there's a sleeve that's on there that backs it up. And then the nut just spins right on your JIC male. I was trying to keep this tucked in a little bit because of the way the frame's made here. And you boom up a lot, I don't want to hit that. So the twist in this hose will naturally kind of put it, you know, over here away from danger, hopefully anyway. Need a third hand. Problem is I'm running into that hose. I could take that off maybe and dip it down. On this side of that hose might route a little nicer. Be running down through there somehow. Let's try it. Hmm, I'm still wanting to rub on that hose, so. I think that might be as good as it gets though. It's a lot of hoses in this area. to snug up both of these lines at this end. I still have the one pilot line that goes from here to here to hook up. Add a little more hydraulic oil and then I think we're officially ready to test. And this is the hose I have for it. I have this Union Elbow too. I'm trying to figure out the best way to make this happen. I'm thinking that's really not a bad way right there. Without having just the absolute perfect length hose. So this plug comes out. This guy here has been one of my main problems, or one of the problems on this whole ordeal is, this is not a regular fitting. It's this goofy long deal. So I had to get this fitting from John Deere, which is, you know, obviously an Itachi fitting. It's still the O-ring seals it way up at the top, but you need those long threads compared to a standard metric fitting to get down in to reach the threads that are there. So that's that one. And then this, this is just a regular M16 
metric thread to JIC adapter. It goes in right there where that plug is. I had that out. I think I just tightened it up with my little knips, maybe. Of course I tightened it. Are you kidding me? Smaller than an eight and bigger than a seven. It's not metric. All right, maybe we'll have it this time. Oh, it is a true eight. The other one I had was a five sixteenths. I probably just didn't try hard enough. It gets this adapter to JIC. Everything on the back side we hooked up prior. Well, it's gonna need a lot of editing, Big John. Okay, there she is. So what we have going on here is this is the solenoid valve running the pilot oil, which is just a little bit of oil that flows in these little dash six hoses. Comes through this manifold block. I'm not sure exactly what magic is happening in here, but there's definitely ports and stuff happening. I think you could hook directly to the spool, but regardless, I taught you wanted it to go through this valve block. Comes through the valve block. The other hose that goes to the bottom is this hose. I'm gonna tie that up a little nicer, but this hose runs down to the bottom of the spool and this hose runs to the top of the spool. So the main spool is already in this main valve stack. This runs the entire machine. When the pilot oil pushes on the side of the spool, it moves it to is basically the main valve and all the oil goes out of these big hoses that we hooked up. This is how it works with the joysticks in your hand or all the other functions. They're all coming through these little lines and then making it all turn into a lot of flow and a lot of pressure in this main valve the pilot line i think they only run at like 300 psi and just a wee little bit of flow because all you're doing is the work of pushing the valve spools of the oil is actually doing the work otherwise if you go way back like say a 235a like the one matt and i were using down there to load out where the d8 was they are big wobble sticks so they don't have pilot like you're physically moving the main valves and that's why they take a lot of work and there's not much finesse with those type of machines so in doing plenty of troubleshooting in here and busting out the old pressure gauge, we're getting 500 PSI coming in. This speed control valve, we were also getting 500 PSI there, which goes into the back of this manifold block. The front of this manifold block on this gauge never moved. They ate on zero the whole time. And what I remembered was the fittings that these hoses connect into are basically a restrictor plate. There's a wee little hole drilled in them. I thought it made it go smoother because the oil couldn't just come slamming through. The solution to quick and dirty try this is to hook a bypass hose from the main control valve pilot directly to our solenoid valve and basically not use that restrictor or the manifold mainly for the sake of this test let's see what happens matt you want to give her the beans come on baby oh, oh bud got it off. sweet Definitely excited. This has been a long road. We can go do some clearing now. Well, last step on the thumb project, put some more oil in the old 240. I got another drum of 46 weight hydraulic oil. I got this from Petroleum Service Company. Ordered it Monday morning and it showed up Tuesday morning. Let's get her pumped in. seem to order one. These are my nice clean other hydraulic oil buckets.
got to bleed the pumps now. We pull these plugs out of the top of the pressure regulator and burp the air out of them. Do the same thing on this other plug back here. checking on how everything moves right now. The boom is straight up in the air. The hose is kind of running into the frame there. Thinking either a spacer here, maybe even a bend that tube a little, kick it up. I think it would still be okay when it's down. You can see how deer space there's up. And I kind of ignored that apparently I shouldn't have. So I fixed the hydraulic line issue by just taking a bar, giving each of those stainless lines a little ink up in the air. And what that did was allow us to have plenty of clearance when the boom is up all the way. You can see that out there a little bit further away, the hoses are basically the same elevation as the factory John Deere lines. And this seemed to work well. I'm happy with how that all turned out. There's the final product of the tubes laid out on the boom. I'm not sure if I wanna give this a little touch up paint for the time being, or probably in the next couple years, I would like to paint this whole thing. So it may just wait for that. She's a little dry. I'll just lay her out here to hit that grease fitting and then I'm gonna have to curl it up more to get the grease fitting up there and the whole machine could use grease right now. But besides tuning up those ends and I think I'm gonna back off the pressure relief valve because I got a little scared and couldn't overrun it with the bucket. We're calling it done. Thank you guys for watching this series. It has been a tough one. When I very first started searching it, people were saying, hey, if you want auxiliary lines, just sell that thing and, and buy a machine that already has them. And I thought, that's nuts. We, we could we could put them on there but hindsight is 2020 and i would have to say if you were in the position i was two months ago without auxiliary lines that you should probably sell it and buy one that already has auxiliary lines but we're there now so it was a fun learning experience and i think this thing's going to be very useful around the farm cleaning up trees getting a little clearing jobs and things like that thank you again